Welcome to iLectronline. Now, we have done quite a few videos so far on Markov's chains. However, as I alluded to before, there are really two different ways in which you can set up the matrices. In the textbooks that I've been using, I've been, of course, showing most of the matrices in the way that I've been doing Markov's chains. But there is another method, and that method is just as valid, maybe to some people even more valid or easier to use than the method I'm using. So we're going to also show you some Markov chain problems and examples and videos using this other method, so I'll call it method two. And the big difference between them is if you look at it here, where if you have the transition matrix, the from states are put on the left side and the two states are put on the top. Remember the method I showed, the from were at the top and the two were on the side here, so this is different. Now, what's also different is the state matrix. In this case, the initial state matrix, X sub zero, is written horizontally instead of vertically. So the states, A, B, C, instead of having them in a vertical matrix, they're in a horizontal matrix. So then when you try to calculate the next state, X sub one, you multiply the initial state times the transition matrix, not the way it was done before, where it was a transition matrix times initial state matrix. So we have reversed order of the matrices. And we have to do that because of the shape of the matrix. Since this is horizontal and this is a three by three, we have to multiply the X sub naught times P. If it's a vertical matrix, then we have to multiply P times X sub naught. So there's a different method of doing that. You might find that this may be an easier method because there's less calculations. I just feel that it's not as intuitive, but once you're used to it, who cares about the difference? So I will show you how to do this as well. Now we'll also show you how to associate that with something that looks like this. We'll put the numbers in there in just a moment, but first let's work out the next state. So in this case, X sub P, and let me grab a, a black pen here. So X sub one, is going to be X sub naught, which is the initial state, which is 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.1, multiplied times the transition state, which we have over there, 0 0.6, 0 0.3, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.7, 0 0.1, and 0 0.3, 0 0.2, and 0 0.5. Now you say, well, wait a minute, the numbers do not add up to one when you go vertically, and that's of course correct because they don't have to add up vertically to one. They have to add up horizontally to one. If you notice, 0.6 plus 0.3 plus 0.1 is one. This also adds up to one. That also, add, also adds, up, adds up to one. So in the case we use this particular method, where we have the from states on the left and the two states on top, the numbers add up to one horizontally, as well as the state here, the state matrix, notice that the numbers add up to one horizontally instead of vertically in the other method. Okay, now when we multiply this, we get the following. So since this is a one by three matrix, we end up with a one by three matrix over there. So here, to get the first element, we multiply this row by this column. So we get 0.4 times this, 0.5 times this, 0.1 times that. We probably want to get a calculator. Uh, maybe we don't need a calculator. Let's see, that's 0.24. That's 0.34, that's 0.37. So 0 0.37 is our first element. Now we multiply these three elements times this column right here. So that would be 0.12, that would be 0.35, that would be 0 0.47, 0 0.49. So that would be 0 0.49. And again, if I make a mistake, the numbers will not add up to one. So that's an easy way to, to check it. And now we multiply this row times this column. So that's 0 0.4, 0 0.04, 0 0.05, 0 0.09 and that would be 0 0.14. Do they add up to one? Let's see here. 70, that's eight, seven, 16. Yep, they do add up to one, so it looks like I did that correctly. So this here is now state one. If I want to find state two, X sub two, I multiply state one, which is 0 0.37, 0 0.49, and 0 0.14, and I multiply that times the transition matrix, and that transition matrix still is 0 0.6, 0 0.3, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.7, 0 0.1, 0 0.3, 0 0.2, 0 0.5, and then we end up with the second state matrix right there. In this case, I'll elect to use my calculator. So this row times this column, so 0 0.37 times 0 0.6 plus 0 0.49 times 0 0.2 plus 0 0.14 times 0.3 equals, and I get 0 0.362, 0 0.362, 
my next element, it's this row times this column, so 0.37 times 0.3 plus 0.49 times 0.7 plus 0.14 times 0.2 equals, I get 0 0.482, 0 0.482, and finally I multiply this row times this column, I get 0.37 times 0.1 plus 0.49 times 0.1, plus 0.14 times 0.5 equals, I get 0 0.156, 0 0.156. And again, just to make sure we did this correctly, it better add up to one. So that was, okay, that checks 13, that checks three, seven, that checks. So that's exactly equal to one. And so that would be state one, state two, and that's how we continue uh, calculating the sub subsequent states. In the next videos, we'll show you how to find the stable, uh, what we call stable state matrix, uh, and we'll do that in our next videos. Now, first, next thing we're going to do is make sure we know how to translate between this format and this format. Remember, things are kind of transposed in this methodology, and so let's make sure we still know how to do that. So from A to A, that's 0 0.6. That would be 60% of all the population in A remains with A. From B to B is 70%. And from C to C is 50%. Okay, now for the other transitions. So from A to B is 30%. So from A to B is 30%, so 30% over here. And from A to C is 10%. So A to C, that would be 10%. And those three better add up to 100%, which that's the case. Now next we do from B. So from B to A, so from B to A, that would be 20%. From B to B, we already have that, and from B to C is 10%. And again, those better up to 100% than they do. Now, from C to A is 30%. So from C to A, this is 30%. From C to B is 20%. And staying with C is 50%, so this plus this plus this, 100%, and that is correct as well. So you can see that in the end, it's exactly the same as before. The only difference is that the matrix is transposed instead of like this. The other, we have it like this, so we transpose it back and forth like that, which means the state matrix has to be horizontal instead of vertical. And when we multiply, the state matrix comes first, then the transition matrix. The other method, the transition matrix comes first, and then the state matrix. The rest is the same, but just so that you can have it clear in your mind that you can do it both ways and get the same results. And I'll show you some more examples so that you're not confused. If you feel more comfortable with this method, I'll show you some examples how to do the Markov chains with this method in the next so many videos. See you in the next one.